Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, and it's certainly been a while since the last time I did a spoiler review of his Dark Materials. So finally, after the long anticipated wait, we are in season three, the final season, right? Uh, if you're unfamiliar, each season is, is a book of the trilogy by Philip Pullman, right? Um, so the first season was The Golden Compass, the second season was The Subtle Knife, and season three is The Amber Spyglass, right? But of course, there's distinctions between the two. You know, it's not 100% um, adaptation of everything, right? Nor would you want it to be. Um, but as I've said in the past many a times, the spirit of the books is very well translated for the screen. So I truly, truly love that. And for clarity, when I say spoilers, I'm gonna talk about it from the perspective of primarily just in terms of the TV show, right? And then I'm gonna call a second spoiler warning. Um, this is for people who have read the books, right? So I'm gonna talk about things uh, that I anticipate and you know certain nuances that I saw in the episode based on my knowledge of the books. So if you haven't read the books, you know, probably not a section for you. Although if you're fine with spoilers, then so be it, right? Um, just wanted to kind of give you that opportunity. But uh, but right off the bat, I will be talking about the show and what happened on the show, right? So obviously I um, encourage you to go watch the episode before listening to me. And so in this episode, I will be covering episode one specifically. And starting with overall thoughts, you know, I, I, I thought it was a good way to essentially ease us in to the, the season, right? Um, it's been a while, as I made mention. For me, I reread the books um, when the first season, like before the first season came out. And it's just to familiarize myself, but, you know, haven't really revisited them since. And I haven't revisited the TV show since then either. So getting that like two minute recap at the beginning was... Um, very, very worth it, right? And very appreciated. And, you know, overall, as far as this, you know, it kind of, like I said, eases into it. We have these converging storylines. Um, we knew that at the end of season two, a lot of stuff happened. We lost some characters. Um, and, you know, our primary focus was going to now be back to Lord Asriel, the Magisterium. Of course, uh, Will and Lyra, season two was all about their kinship. Now they're split apart. You know, what does that mean? And M Mrs. Coulter in particular, you know, her and Lyra, you know, they're kind of off on their own journey. Will is trying to find them. So let's start with, I guess, Lyra, right? So, you know, she's been the protagonist, let's say. Uh, you know, I mean, we followed her since season one. In that way and we followed Wilson season one too but um, you know she's always been the central focus she's been the focus of the prophecy right uh, things of that nature and so you know here we don't get a lot of her uh, certainly not in terms of like the quote-unquote real world um, she seems to be in this dream state and where she is it's kind of unknown and what it is um, you know it's kind of like a factory um, Roger is there so that much we know for sure the guilt that she feels um, because she essentially caused you know Roger's death at the climax of season one and that has weighed heavily upon her and so you know that's what kind of she's thinking about as she's essentially being sedated by her own mother, right? And that's what makes this so creepy. And yet, you kind of understand. I mean, that you know, Mrs. Coulter is this continual you love to hate her sort of character because, at least for me, I understand her motivation, right? She, you could see the pain in her eyes, especially at the end of the episode, where she's trying to do the right thing. She's she knows the world essentially, and it's specifically her magisterium, is coming after Lyra because of this prophecy. And because of that, 
she's doing whatever she can to protect her daughter, even if that protection means all the things that she is doing and being the villain to her daughter, um, as long as that means saving her life, right? So it, it's an interesting dynamic, right, for sure. And in particular, watching Mrs. Coulter with the young girl who only speaks in sign language, right? Um, because Pan, her, uh, Lyra's demon, is in a state of consciousness and is able to speak. And he's the one kind of advocating on Lyra's behalf of like, you know, you're, um, that, that is my demon, uh, Chloe, um, trying to get some food, um, but apologies for that. Anyway, so Pan is trying to, you know, plead essentially with, with Mrs. Coulter uh, to no luck. And one would imagine, well, couldn't he have said something to the, the girl who signs? And the answer is no, because she wouldn't have heard him. And, you know, if, if you're only so, sort of given one opportunity of escape, if we want to call that, you know, that it's, an, it's a strategy towards escape, you know, Pam is smart enough not to waste it on that, in, at least in that particular moment, right? But the girl does observe Mrs. Coulter um, and she kind of had this sense about her that something was a little bit off, right? I mean, that's kind of how we open their interaction to begin with. Uh, and Mrs. Coulter was lying about, you know, essentially uh, Lyra being possessed or, you know, bewitched, whatever she says. Um, and I thought, you know, those scenes worked really well in that way. So, um, yeah, I think uh, it, it, it's interesting to see the mother-daughter dynamic really brought to the forefront of this series. You know, I, I really appreciate that a lot. So then let's switch over to Will, who, you know, as I said, they form this kinship and he has a tremendous amount of kin kinship and love um, towards Lyra. And that is his motivating factor, and especially now, you know, in all of this, like, so much was thrown at will towards the last ha last part of season two, right? Meeting his father, his father essentially tasking him with what the purpose of the subtle knife is and, you know, kind of his part to play in all of this, losing his father, but then also losing Lyra, right? And so, in a sense, nothing makes sense. And he understands the enormity of the situation, I think, <coughs> as the angels, excuse me, as the angels kind of highlight to him, he understands this, but, you know, for him, he, he will not do anything without Lyra. And that is the strength of their bond. And, um, you know, I admire it tremendously. And you, you, you can see the resolve in his eyes. And certainly the angels kind of argue about, you know, they don't have time for this sort of thing. Uh, one of them, you know, agrees that they don't, but what other choice that do they have? And so they do go on this journey of trying to save Lyra. And even though initially they're kind of against it, you know, I think, it's good to see the angels realize the power of the alithiometer and kind of how Lyra is not just anybody, that there is some significance to her, even if they themselves don't necessarily understand it in this moment. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, that, that was really nice to see, and, and it's great to see our one true bear king back in this episode. Um, I thought that that was a great bit. And certainly, you know, when him and Will square off, you could see, you know, Will's a smart guy and, and this certainly showcases it because, you know, everyone thinks like this guy's crazy. Like he's gonna take on this bear, um, this armored bear and, you know, he essentially tricks him and showcases to him 
you know, I, I still think like in a fight between Will, like Will's smart enough to know that if they did get into a fight, certainly Will has the subtle knife, but you know, there could be grave harm done to him. And so slicing through the helmet, you know, as a showcase of his abilities was the smart move to, to say like, no, the, the, the fight's not even worth it, right? Because, um, you know, though I may suffer, right? Like that, that's what Eric can kind of compute in his mind. Ultimately he would lose, right? And so um, that's a key component of, of this. And then you can see kind of them forming a bond based on Lyra, um, because certainly Yorick, uh, he, he has a tremendous amount of love for Lyra, right? Um, you know, he owes her so much. And so there's nothing that he wouldn't do for her. And so of course he's on board to go and help and save her, right? Um, and yeah, I, I love sort of that exploration. Uh, I'm excited to see more of the angels that are with them. Um, I thought, you know, I, I love their personalities and their human form. Um, I thought that was great. And as a quick side note, I, I do appreciate the opening kind of, you know, very Lord of the Rings prologue-esque where it sets the table of what is this war, right? And so the authority, the, you know, named himself the creator, but he's really just an angel, right? So um, I, it sets the lore up for, you know, for what this is. Um, and, you know, how we're gonna be rooting for the various characters throughout this. So sticking with, uh, let's call it our quote unquote good guys, you know, although they have all shades of gray. Lord Asriel, right? What I appreciate about Lord Asriel um, in this portrayal is his gruffness, right? Um, in the Daniel Craig version, you know, the, there was the Golden Compass movie with Daniel Craig and uh, Nicole Kidman, who played um, Lord Asriel and Mrs. Coulter. Here, as James McAvoy, you know, he's no longer kind of in that posh scholarly vibe. You know, he is now a mercenary, uh, you know, kind of this leader of this army, right? And he's he's an adventurer, so I, I really love his look and that he's taking things um, in his own hands, really. And that we do get more of him, right? Because in, certainly in season two, we really missed out on him. Um, and not that we got that much of him in season one, you know, we got him sort of at the beginning and then we got him at the end, so, I'm curious to see how it all plays out overall in this season because it seems like we're going to get quite a lot of him, which is great. You know, I think James McAvoy is a fantastic actor and I love seeing him and his portrayal of Lord Asriel in particular is fantastic. And, you know, so I am all for it and seeing, you know, I, I, I wish the action set piece of them kind of going in and rescuing the leaders that he needs in order to, you know, really strengthen his army was a little bit more well done. You know, I mean, part of it is like it showcases his strength by being so at ease to take out all of these guards and so forth and set these people free. On the other hand, you know, I think it, it was, you know, their budget with VFX and the things that have to come later, uh, you know, one as one would imagine, I you know I I think they just kind of spare themselves and whatever else. But um, yeah, he rescues this leader that he needs, and you know he's trying to recruit him, but he doesn't want to go. Um, not until Lord Asriel becomes a little bit more convincing, and I I, I really appreciate that scene with. Um, with the guy's older daughter and you know we we know what this is all about right and that's what lord Azrael essentially explains to him that her demon was severed and she's essentially soulless and that this is the this is what this is all about when when he goes to wage war with the authority this is this is what he's talking about right um and because i thought that was a very astute 
and point in question from the the leader that Lord Asriel is trying to recruit. And he said, well, why are you waging this war? You know, and he said to, to kill the authority. And it's like, well, that's not, you know, um, there's something beyond that, right? And this certainly um, gives that reason beyond that. Um, also, what's interesting to note in all this, um, you know, the idea of death and whatnot, right? Because Lord Azrael brings that up um, a, a, as a particular aspect of this, you know, um, death being a thing and because of the authority. And that's a very interesting notion, you know, um, to be able to bring up. And by the end, <laughs> certainly, uh, you know, they're convinced to follow Lord Asriel. And we see essentially um, the army amassing, like, you know, how big uh, everything is. And one thing to also note is Lord Asriel has learned to be able to get in between worlds uh, using the same essentially technique that he used with Roger, except without having to, you know, cause death by severing that connection between a demon and their human. Now, does it take a toll on them? Uh, we'll find out ultimately, you know, um, but, <coughs> um, but yeah, you know, uh, just something to know. And then finally, we have the Magisterium trying to, you know, get to Lyra, figure out all of this and, and whatnot. Um, yeah, I mean, from a plot perspective, not much there besides, like, you know, they're, they're frustrated. They're trying to figure it out. Um, you know, the, they see the resistance towards them building as evidenced through, you know, these other factions and books and stuff um, and gatherings. So they know that a threat is rising, and so they're trying to do everything that they can to stop it. And the biggest one being, you know, preventing whatever might have been prophesized and by any means necessary, right? Um, I think this highlights the sort of hypocrisy of it all, um, where, you know, say and command onto others, but, uh, you know, for you it's okay type of deal, right? So, um, yeah, there's that aspect of it, and um, certainly we can anticipate that uh, that time is running out for Mrs. Coulter, right? You know, she has Will coming towards her. There's the little girl um, who knows that something's afoot, and now the Magisterium is very much full force of head, uh, you know, to try to figure this out. So, um, you know something will be a brewing very, very soon, for sure, right? That's what we expect. So yeah, those are my overall thoughts on the episode. Now, um, let let me dive in further. So this is the second spoiler warning. Um, this is where I will tie in my book knowledge um, and, you know, now invite everyone to, you know, comment down below any of your thoughts. Um, if you do tie in the books, you know, just kind of give that special spoiler warning um, with me, obviously, like, totally fine, you know, anything can be spoiled, I'm, I'm happy because <clears throat> I have read the books, um, but for other people, I just want to give them that opportunity. So, without further ado, um, you know, the inclusion of the Magisterium has always been something that the books don't necessarily have, you know, in, in general, we follow, follow Lyra, we follow Will, and that's kind of about it. You know, um, the angels with Will, that rings true. Uh, this whole Lord Asriel subplot, uh, I could be mistaken if I am, let me know, but we don't get in the books, right? We, we get very little of Lord Asriel in general. And I'm excited for that expansion um, within the TV series. As I said, James McAvoy, I think, is a brilliant actor. I love Lord Asriel. And so seeing kind of the depth and strategy of, you know, what he plans for, for against the authority, um, I think, is an exciting inclusion, right? Um, 
And, you know, obviously as viewers who don't know the books, um, I don't think they know what Lyra is, is envisioning. Um, and I'm curious to kind of hear what they would think. Um, you know, given that there was the inclusion, Lord Asriel talking about, you know, death and so forth, because, you know, for, at this point, you know, he, he, we're full, full spoiler territory. But yeah, I mean, it's it's the visions of the land of the dead. And that is kind of where Will and Lyra will ultimately need to go to. Um, and that's where Roger is, right? And um, the... You know, in order to win the war, the land of the dead um, plays a major, major component of it all. Um, we interestingly didn't see our scientist. Um, you know, so it'll be interesting to see when we bring her in. You know, because obviously she plays a very key part in <laughs> in you know the amber spyglass. So, um, you know, very much looking forward to her and the world that she does end up on. You know, I'm very interested to see how that all looks. You know, I, we, we've seen kind of little screenshots of it if you've been following them on social media and promotions. But um, all the same, like just to see it visually and in context, I think is going to be very exciting. I don't think we're going to get that next episode. Um, maybe by the third episode, I think we'll get like the first, you know, first viewpoints into into that world um but we'll see i think i think that next episode in particular is going to be focused on you know as i said the uh the battle for lyra if you will you know everything's kind of coming to a head there from the previews we do get that lord asriel you know we see him strategizing again that's all in particular new um so yeah, I'm 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 looking forward to a fun season. You know, there's a lot to look forward to, um, and yeah, I think you know they they took their time because they needed to with the VFX, and so I'm hoping you know I anticipate that like we do see a battle you know with the authority, and that that is as grand as you know we can imagine it to be. So yeah, lots, lots to look forward to. You know, I think, I think it's uh, going to be a good season. Going to be a great way to wrap things up. And uh, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are in particular. I'll be back every, you know, episode. Um, on HBO Max, I saw that they dropped two episodes. So I will do an episode two uh, really, really soon. I wasn't expecting that they drop would drop two episodes. Um, I know in Britain, I don't think it comes out for a little bit, but um, regardless of whenever you're catching it, you know, um, for me, I will be doing it on an episode by episode analysis and talking about it that way and would love to have you join me for this journey and comment down below uh, with your thoughts on how things are going, where you think they're going, um, comparisons to the books and all of that. And, you know, even feel free to point out where I'm wrong, right? Uh, my knowledge of the books, as time lingers, it dissipates, right? So, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, as always. So thank you so much. I truly appreciate you. I hope to see you for the next episode.